Good evening, I'm Sean Green and this is Sports Night. Well, there's just one change in the Windies camp as they prepare to face England in the final one-day international at Kensington Oval on Thursday. CBC's Anne-Marie Burke tells us just what that change is. Miguel Cummins is in. Shannon Gabriel is out. Cummings comes into the West Indies side to replace Gabriel, who suffered a side strain in last Sunday's match played in Antigua. Gabriel underwent scans, which confirmed the nature of the injury, leading him to be ruled out of contention for Thursday's contest at Kensington Oval. There is no doubt that the right arm pace of Gabriel will be missed, as he has been an integral member of the regional side's bowling attack. He claimed two wickets in the opening one day international, but took just one in the second game before limping off after sending down three overs. He's taken 16 wickets from 10 one day internationals since making his debut last June. Meanwhile, the Barbados seamer Cummings, who last turned out in the Maroons in November of 2016, will bring some speed to the attack. West Indies assistant coach and the man who has special responsibility for the bowlers, Roddy Estwick, said he's confident that Cummings can hold his own. It's going to be a big loss um, with Shannon because he's, he's led the line very well with a new ball. You know, he's, he's gone out there and he's been aggressive. But um, it's good to give people opportunities as well. It, it gives you a chance to see where you're stuck at, to see how, how, how deep your cupboard is or how many players you've got in reserve. So if Miguel gets the, the, the opportunity on, on Thursday, I'm sure he's not going to let anybody down. He's been around the, um, around the team now for a year, year or so. So it's just a, another addition to the squad. Although the Windies have already lost the three-match series, the game on Thursday is just as important as any. Well, we're still playing for points. We're still trying to qualify for the, for the World, Cup, um, World Cup. So every game is very, very important to us. So we, we still have to go out here and, and, and look to win the game. Even though the, the, the series is gone, it, it, it doesn't matter. We need points and we need them badly. So we've just got to come out, to, um, come out on Thursday a good performance we're not that far away from England if you look at if you look at the two games you know we did we didn't play the big moments very well but once we can get those critical moments right I'm sure we can come up with a win despite the constant criticism that the regional boys are yet to turn a relatively good showing into victory coach Eswick says a lot has to be taken into perspective we tend to pull our own down instead of back them the, the young people when you look at the number of test match uh, one the internationals that they played Owen Morgan has played 173 one day internationals, which is more than our whole team put together. So it's a learning curve. You've got people like Brad Coley, who's played over 300 one day internationals. So it's not a quick fix. It takes time, it takes hard work, and it takes support as well. The support from the Caribbean people is going to be very important if we're to reach where we're supposed to be. The final one day international is set for 9 a.m. at Kensington Oval on Thursday. Anne Marie Burke, CBC Sports. Let's stick with cricket for a while and Ravi Chandran Ashwin proved once again why well, he is rated the number one test bowler in the ICC rankings as he led India to an emphatic 75-run victory over Australia, levelling the series at one game apiece. Resuming the day on 213 for four, they were eventually bowled out for 274, leaving Australia just 187 to win. Now, Cheteswar Pujara fell just eight runs short of a century, while Ajinka Rahine got 52. Now, Josh Hazelwell was the pick of the bowlers, taking six for 67. Now, chasing the target, the Aussies were then dismissed for, get this, just 112, with the last six wickets going down for just 11. Ashwin again showed his class bowling with a masterful performance, picking up six for 41. Here's a look at how he did it. Fine shot. Nice stride forward. It's a very good half century from Ajin Kirani. Big shot for leg before again. Rahani's got to go. A magnificent innings for 52. No, still have got a wicket to show for it. Oh, gone through once again. A gone. Another one gone. Streamed. Gone. Having said that, he's driven one. Straight to extra cover. Australia need 188 to win in this final innings of this test match. Superb delivery. There was a noise and that goes the finger. Big shot. He's given it. He's left it alone. So the impact doesn't matter. The finger goes up. Oh God. The 
Vince looks dead. Thank you. Yeah. It's gone. The finger has gone up. It's up in the air and taken by Sam. Take a chance. Ashwin gets five. Dead. Gone. Straight to Ashwin. Picks up a six. And it's all over for Australia. Well, let's take a break from cricket and talk about some football now. Combermere and Foundation play to a draw. Uh, this was in the latest fixtures of the Coca-Cola Barbados Secondary Schools Under-16 competition. Uh, playing at the Churchill grounds last evening. Christchurch Foundation and Combermere fought to the dying minutes for a victory. Here's Damien Best. Christchurch Foundation in the black and yellow taking on Combermere. The foundation will be the first to get on the score sheet in the eighth minute. Saviola Thomas breaks away and he just had to beat the keeper. Walks this one into the goal. That's 1-0. Foundation pressing once again. Threading the needle this time. Releases the striker but he can't find the back of the net. Corner kick now and Foundation had a super sub. Yep, it's the upright. Foundation's defense getting the job done. The boys in black enjoying their time at home. Dominating the first half. Long free kick brings the custodian into action. And he collects on the second attempt. Kamamir with a free kick of their own. Bending it like Beckham in his prime. But the keeper was in full control. However, the visitors found the equalizer through Dante Thorne. Leaves the keeper for dead. And while the defender really should have done better, the score now, one all. Then to rub salt in the wound, Andre Applewhite with the golden left foot curls. his free kick into the goal. Let's take another look. The keeper losing his footing in the process. It's now 2-1. Second half action, and we pick up right where we first ended. Applewit trying his luck with the long searching ball. The keeper in lots of trouble, but he averts danger. Free kick seemed to be the trump card in this game. Ari Dorson in the 48th minute, getting his head to it first to bring the score level at two goals apiece. Both teams searching for the victory now, and Foundation finding the opening but it's too bad offside the call Kamamir's turn and a little push and pull gets the separation the cross coming in but the finishing touches were lacking that one well over the crossbar and if you thought the previous play was inaccurate well close your eyes folks as Kamamir squander a simple chance to finish in the closing minute of the contest. And that was all she wrote. This one finishing in a two-all draw. Damien Best, CBC Sports. Well, thank you, Damien. Coming up, another player goes down injured for the Cavs. On your mark, get set. Go! It's the Pioneer Dairy National Primary School Championships 2017 at the Usain Bolt Sports Complex. Don't miss the excitement of the quarterfinal on March 8th, the semifinal on March 15th, and the final on March 22nd. Admission each day is $5 for children and $10 for adults. Tickets are available at SO Blackrock, Emerald City Supermarket, CS Pharmacy, LS Laboratory, and Barbados Union of Teachers. Entry by ticket only. Get more details at www. .com or join us on Facebook at Napsap Barbados. Come and have your say on the draft amendment to the physical development plan before it goes into effect. The Town and Country Development Planning Office will be hosting a series of community meetings and they want your input. Meetings will take place on Monday, February 27th at the Alexandra School, Spicetown, St. Peter. Queen's College, Husband St. James, on Tuesday, February 28th. 
the Queen's Park Steel Shed, Bridgetown, on Friday, March 3rd, and the Allen School, Bell Plain St. Andrew, on Monday, March 6th. All meetings begin at 6 p.m. The final meeting on the draft amendment to the Physical Development Plan takes place at the Oysters Bay Gardens, Christ Church, on Saturday, March 11th, at 3 p.m. Persons interested in examining the draft amendment should visit the Town and Country Development Planning Office, Block C, the Garrison St. Michael, between 8.15 a.m. and 4.30 p.m., or visit their website at www.townplanning.gov.bb slash pdp. Written comments will be accepted through the website, or they may be sent to the Town and Country Development Planning Office by Wednesday, March 15th. Free health checks will be provided at all of the meetings. And we're back. Well, it was all blue as Eiffel House ran away with the title of Champion House as Darrell Jordan held their sports day at the Usain Bolt Complex. Eiffel amassed 1,994 points with Ward second with 1,792. Jordan, they were third, 1,696. And Corbin rounded out the table with 1,124 points. Now taking a look at the 200 meters is City Seas and Marie Burke. This is 200 meters action and the girls on the 13 race was a battle royale between Ashante Blackman of Eiffel House in the blue and Shaquana Maynard of Ward House in the green. Off the bend, both girls looked good but it really seemed Maynard was the one that was better able to control her form and sure enough down the stretch she punched another gear. Blackmore is on her heels. Could she hold on? Sure enough, she did. 29.68 seconds. Blackmore was second, 30.11. And in third, Shakira Odell, 32.25. Picking up the boys on the 13 race with just over 100 meters to go. And he was the tallest in the field. And he sure stamped his authority, Ale Alexander. He looked over his shoulder, maybe for some assurity, and cruised home in 28.88 seconds. His Eiffel House teammate, Raquan Leacott, was second, 30.06. And in for third, Tremaine Broom of Jordan, 31.18. The under-15 girls came off the bend with the race still anyone's for the taking. So the last 80 meters was where all the running was made. In the red shirt, Shakila Boyce of Corbin House gave them their first victory in the twos. Finishing fast for second was Kelly Yerwood Francois and third, Kishante Griffith. The under-15 boys 200 was a full field and surging ahead was Christian Reed. But watch T.O. St. Hill. He's finishing fast. Reed's legs just didn't have enough left as St. Hill takes a ball for what was a good race. St. Hill's time 27.09. Reed's time was 27.22. And on the inside for third was Cornell Francis at 28.66. Let's step up to the under 17 girls. And again, it would come down to the last meters. And with arms pumping, Theresa Phillips looks set to take it. And boy, did she have a fight on her hand. As Shania Lashley he nearly took it from her now that was a close one you could say the under 17 boys race was a done deal from the get-go as Uroy Witten had them beat from early maybe it was his tall stature and long strides but no matter the reason he was the winner ahead of Marcus Lovell and Shaquem Blackman Ward the under 20 girls race featured a familiar face Mary Frazier not really a sprinter but she was good out the blocks until Giovanna Gistis went into overdrive. Boy, she was making the running to hold off the challenge of Fraser, and that's the under 20 200 queen. And who would be the fastest under 20 boy over 200 meters at Dow Jordan? Well, that question was answered in the final 100 meters as Rakeem Kuz Corbin had enough gas left in the tank. In for second was Rashawn Thompson and in third, the Mario Broom. Now that's a wrap from Daryl Jordan. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC Sports. Well, thank you, Anne-Marie. Well, Taekwondo is uh, very much alive in Barbados. And the new executive is on a mission to improve the visibility of the sport locally. 
Now, according to the new president of the Taekwondo Association of Barbados, that's Henderson Turton, they've been around for more than 30 years and currently have approximately about 250 members. Now, speaking in a wide-ranging interview with CBC Sports, Turton says they are hoping to have an athlete represent Barbados in the sport, that is, in 2014 Olympics. Perhaps, realistically, it's perhaps a little too soon to expect because there's a lot of work, a lot of technical work. Not that we, we don't have it, but our athletes are not as experienced in terms of going outside of Barbados and competing against the best from other countries. So there's another thing that we're going to be working on, um, this administration is going to be working on, to expose our athletes, to let them see what's out there, because when they see what's out there, they realize, hold on, this thing is huge, and there are opportunities out there. Um, and again, I don't want to go off track, but People don't even realize that there are academic qualifications in the sport in Taekwondo. So you can actually have an undergraduate degree in Taekwondo in other parts of the world. You can there you could then therefore use that as leverage to, um, to 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 have sporting positions in different organizations as fitness specialists, etc. Um, even bodyguard work, for example, even if you wanted to do that. Of course, that's Turton looking ahead to 2024 and not 2014. That's gone. Well, Turton also says that the association has uh, a packed agenda for the remainder of 2017 and is inviting interesting persons to join up. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we have another, on the 19th of March, we actually have another competition preparation seminar, which also will be featuring two presentations from a number of other professionals, dietitian and a doping specialist. So essentially, we're going to be dealing with nutrition in sport as well as doping so that by the end of that, it meant that within the last four weeks, we would have had uh, the athletes training on com competition preparation, but also conditioning and fitness, injury management, nutrition, and now doping. So that this then leads up to our first um, competition in April, which is then now a precursor to our national championships, which will be in June. Thereafter, we are hoping to use that as a, a screening mechanism to then select our national team, which would then be in training to represent the country later on in the year and in the first quarter next year. And we're back. The National Sports Council has handed over table tennis equipment to the Pineless Creative Workshop as part of their sports development initiative. The equipment included a brand new table tennis board, rackets and balls, which will aim to boost the sport within the community. Chief Executive Officer of the National Sports Council, Jerry Blenman, says sports should not be seen as just a pastime, but as an important economic and societal ingredient for development. The National Sports Council is happy to be a part of the process of development of this community. We consider sports to be an integral part of uh, development and uh, to take sports out of uh, the community and out of the holistic development of any system really is to cheat it of uh, very important opportunities for uh, development and socio-economic development. Our panelist creative workshop chief executive officer Rodney Grant says sport is an instrument which can resolve a lot of social problems which exist within the community. We welcome any initiative to invest in our community and we don't take any investment in this lightly. Um, actually we, we emerge out of a process where over 40, 50 years ago we would have welcomed any investment like this. Remember when you're paying was first formulated. Um, the absence of recreational facilities was um, the cause of many social problems that we had at the time. And that is one of the reasons why we emerged as a predominantly sporting community. Because we were able at the time to, be, to, be, to use sports to resolve a lot of the social problems that we would have had coming out of the 50s and the early 60s. 
Kusao members uh, remain unbeaten on 166, a combined in a fourth wicket partnership of 196 with Asilo Gunaratne to put Sri Lanka on course for a big first in its total against Bangladesh. This is on the first day of the opening test at Gaul. Sri Lanka reached 321 for four at stumps after the captain Ragnar Harath won the toss and opted to bat in the first of the two test series against their South Asian rivals. Here are the highlights. Oh, he doesn't mind that. He's trying to bear to full and get the ball to swing. That'll go for the first boundary of the morning. Oh, that's the reason why. That's the outswinger. Bit wide on that occasion. Put your way. No problems. Four. That's gone. He's picked up a wicket. Finally, a loose ball. Oh, and he's gone. There it is. He's chased the wide one. Oh, on this Bangladeshi attack. Ah, that's just touched around the corner. That should race away for four, and that is. Well played by Kusal Mendes, and that's his 50. Again, a short delivery. I think they've just done bowling too many. That's gone. That's gone away from that fielder. They'll find the boundary drops. Nicely played. Sela Gunaratna just leans into that one. No one backward or square, that'll be four. Kusal Mendes. It's driven down the ground and Mendes raises his hands. 101. Yes. Good use of the fate. This is a lovely shot. It's gone all the way. It's gone for six. He's on 150. The second time. Bolding inside edge onto the stumps. Good delivery. Well, let's have a look at the Sri Lankan batting there. 32 Karunaratne there. 166 to Mendes. So here's what's happening on Wednesday locally in the world of sports. The future of track and field in Barbados will be on display at the Usain Bolt Sports Complex as the quarterfinals of Pine Hill Napsa gets underway. In football, the Coca-Cola Barbados Secondary Schools Under-16 tournament continues with four matches. There are two key quarterfinal fixtures with Alexandra hosting Christchurch Foundation. That's at Spikestown, while the law school will travel to Dayton Griffith. All games start at 3.30 p.m. And that's sports for Tuesday. But hey, join us again tomorrow for more highlights and more news. I'm Sean Green. Good evening.